So with an hour free today, I thought I'd build a kit, and this is the one I've gone for. Um, well, it's one of these component testers. Um, you have the device on there, is it, and you put your uh, transistor or your resistor or whatever in there, lock it in, and uh, you can test the item find out exactly what it is and I've gone for this one oh can't get the bits out so there's a screen it's quite nice looking I think it's sort of a negative blue screen and I went for this one because it's all based around the 80 mega 328 and I thought that was a really interesting thing. So this is described as the M328 LCD 12864 transistor tester DIY kit diode triode capacitance LCR ESR meter 11 pound 43 and I got this from Top Electronic 1980. Um, they will accept a best offer here uh, but usually I think they come back with like one pence under what the buy it now price is so it seems a bit pointless um, and if we look at the description here we are note this is DIY kit multifunction transistor tester for automatic detection of NPN and PMP transistors N channel P channel MOSFETs diodes tristors thyristors sorry resistors capacitors and and other devices and it can be used as a frequency meter or square signal and PWM signal generator. So that seems like it's full of features. Uh, the 12864 uh, refers to the LCD. It can be powered by 9 volt battery, but I've also read, yep, yeah, further down there at the bottom, or between 5.5 volts and 12 volt external power supply. Uh, how to use weld or solder, um, put a battery in, test the voltage and then pop in the 328p and it should run. Some more details and instructions here. Thank you for purchasing our kit. We believe the product will be excellent etc etc. So first of all we need to do the resistors and then well, the capacitors, there's everything else, basically, uh, after that. So it seems fairly straightforward. Um, if you are not familiar with the chromatic circle, please check the resistance with multimeter. Well, it's a shame I haven't got one of these already built, because that should be able to do it as well. Anyway, let's crack on. Now, I'm happy to admit that I'm not particularly... Um, Okay, with the colour banding on resistors, I know it's something I should learn, but when you've got a multimeter just to test it with, it kind of seems a bit pointless. So there are all the resistors in the correct place, now I just need to solder them in, so I'll turn the soldering iron on, heat that up. So I've been looking at these other components, we've got some uh, ceramic capacitors here, Mark 104. That's, uh, oh, there is a 103 in there as well. Uh, 100 nano uh, farad, the 104s. Some electrolytic, some po polyester uh, capacitor here, I believe that is. As this is based on the 80 mega 328, uh, there's a couple of 22 picofarad uh, capacitors in there as well. And the crystal um, to get that working. And then down here we've got an S9... 012 which is a PNP general purpose transistor a couple of S9014s which are NPN general purpose resistors uh, this uh, interesting one which is marked TL341AA which is an adjustable precision shunt regulator um, and that may be in place of a Zener diode, but um, it's got a 2.495 reference voltage on it, and uh, you can change the output 
uh, depending on resistors that you connect. So we might look at that a bit more. And then we've got the 7550-1, which uh, I believe is a 5 volt regulator. Um, now, this says it can take voltages up to 20 volts on the input. And looking at this, it's up here. Um, I expect this 10 nanofarad capacitor is on the input or the output. And these are marked as being good for 25 volts. So, fingers crossed, we should be able to put a bit more than 12 volts into this uh, and it still work without any problems. So, I've put on all the capacitors now um, and, of course, the only ones you need to really worry about are the electrolytics here, which have um, positive and negative legs, so you need to make sure they're the right way around, the right polarity. So, it feels like we're near the end now. I've just got the IC socket to install for the... 80 mega 328p and the connector for the uh, actual test socket there and the rotary encoder which has a push button on it as well and then obviously the screen which sadly does have a few marks on it now I've got it out of the packet but hopefully that won't be too obvious when we turn it on. Um, I'm absolutely convinced now that this uh, capacitor is supplied as a test capacitor for a calibration um, operation that we'll do shortly once I get it all working. So I'm going to crack on and solder the last few bits. The final soldering job is to solder the screen. Um, now it is mentioned here uh, pins 5 and pins 12 so I believe that means we need to connect to uh, LED A there, uh, VSS, VDD, RS, RST and CS is that, um, and of course D7 and D6 as well. Of course on second thought it should be fairly easy to make sure you've got the right pins connected here because it should marry up with these holes where we're going to put these bind posts in to support the screen. So the advice is before you uh, plug in the AT Mega 328 um, is to power this up and I've got a quality 9 volt battery here and we'll plug that in and you're meant to test between pin 7 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 22 which I think is immediately oops below it, see if I can hold on to them with one hand because you also need to press the button and we should see 5 volts, look at that, 5.998, very accurate. So we now know that the AT Mega is safe to plug in so I'll just disconnect the battery anyway and make sure there's no residual. Um, and that's not going to go in until I bend these legs back a little bit. So we'll just roll it on the bench a little bit. Okay, after about seven attempts, it's in. And now the screen's fitted. And when I complained about the marks on the screens, how did I not notice that it's got a screen protector on? Well, I'm going to leave that on for now. And we'll plug it into some power. And press the button. Excellent. Oh, I'm liking the screen. Not calibrated. Clamp the three pins together and start with the key. Acknowledge the self-test with the key within two seconds. Disconnect pins after. The message, isolate pro... <laughs> oh my goodness, this is getting complicated. And connect a good capacitor with at least 100 nanofarads. Well, this is... 220 I think right so I need to work out how to calibrate this so I've got my calibration kit here um, three well two bits of wire connected uh, for three points and my um, capacitor there and now one thing that I think is a bit poor is it's difficult to tell exactly which 
point is which, but on um, the diagram I've seen, this little ridge here, the one to the left, so the centre point is two, um, and then there's a gap, and then it's one, so on the other side there's a gap, and then it's three, so hopefully that makes sense. So left of the ridge, so if I plug this in there, there, oh this is fiddly, and we'll turn it on. Self test mode, testing. Um, right, so because I've turned it off already, the calibration needs to be done manually. So if I click, what do I click? Here we go, so is it in self test then? Short probes, excellent. Well, it's definitely doing something. Isolate probe. So between one and three, oh, there and there. Test end. Okay, so there's a lot of information there on screen, much of which I didn't catch. Um, but it seems to have suggested it has now finished testing. So show data, so this is all that information it collated, well, those are the graphics for the different uh, components it can test, oh, it's all very interesting isn't it? And then it said my battery's empty, so I'll get a DC to DC converter. Now. I was a little bit worried about putting an electrolytic in it because obviously they have the correct polarity um, but the manual does say don't worry about that we're only using low voltage so it should be fine so let me just put that across one and three good luck everybody Yep, that seemed to be fine, between 1 and 2, 100 microfarad, uh, ESR 0.28 ohms, this is all very interesting stuff. So I'm going to try this N-channel MOSFET, my favourite, the IRF3205, it goes into a lot of my things, but the legs won't fit between, so I'm just going to shove it in with the middle leg here in what I know is number 2. And see what happens. Excellent, so that's worked. It's an N channel enhanced MOSFET, uh, 123 gate drain source. Uh, it's got a capacitance there of 5.34 nanofarads. Um, is that the trigger voltage? 3.4, uh, 3.6 volts, sorry. There's a diode between legs 2 and 3 shown on the di uh, diagram here. Yeah, this seems to work really well. So it is a bit difficult to get these small transistors in, um, but I'm testing a 2N3904 general purpose, you know, transistor. Um, yeah, MPN, there's the diagram again, forward voltage, 
this is working really well. So the last bit I want to test is the frequency generator here and if I do test point two I think it is and go into that section there we are we can see uh, a thousand kilohertz and that's confirmed by my little meter there it starts to get a little bit shady this at certain frequencies but we can see that it is generating those frequencies so that's pretty good and then the last thing I want to check is this 10 bit PWM and uh, let's just change the time base here there we go so we've got 10 all the way up to oh came out of the mode for some reason I go too far so I think we can go from 1% just a tiny pulse width all the way up to ninety nine percent and of course the last thing I said I would check is the voltage uh, we know it works up to 12 volts but will it work at higher voltages than that well we've exceeded 12 volts there 13 volts now that's my battery voltage at the moment and it seems to be absolutely fine. I'm really pleased with this kit. It's a decent kit. It seems well made. It's been fun to put together as well. And it shows lots of really interesting information about the various components. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you can. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.